Hello FlossTube, my name is Brian. I'm known as Blitstitch on Instagram, and I've been watching YouTube for about a year and a half. And I've really enjoyed uh, watching your videos, uh, seeing the things that you've been working on, and getting to know you a little bit. And you've, you've really inspired me and helped me to, to want to stitch more. And I thought it was time for me to uh, introduce myself and share my whips and talk about the things that I'm working on. So that's what I plan on doing today is kind of introducing myself and then showing you, showing you my whips. So how did I get it? How did I get started with cross stitch? Uh, well, probably the, the first thing that happened was when I was young, I had a grandmother that did needlepoint and I always enjoyed watching her. Um, she always had her needlepoint, st her stand set, set up in her, in her living room by her chair uh, with a frame with a, uh, some kind of needlepoint project on it. And she did a lot of things. Um, she, she did needlepoint until uh, she lost her eyesight uh, because of macular de de degeneration. And she, uh, I remember she did a big, a big pheasant Another piece that I remember her doing was uh, a cross stitch of, uh, sorry, a needlepoint piece of an adaptation of the Gleaners, which is a, a pretty fa famous painting. And she used to, she, she'd show me how she did basket weave stitch. And she said she did that because Continental distorted the canvas. And so I learned some needlepoint terms. Uh, when I was older, when I was, uh, about the time that I graduated from high school, uh, my mom kind of got into cross stitch a little bit, counted cross stitch, and she did some things. Uh, she didn't ever do anything that really interested me, but but she was kind of there. She she had a subscription to a, a couple of magazines, and had quite a collection of magazines that later I I kind of hijacked from her uh, when she stopped doing cross stitch. And then uh, when I was dating my wife, uh, my wife was a big cross stitcher and she'd done several things. And after we got married, she got out her big box of cross stitch charts and said, I want to show you this, some of the charts that I have. And she showed me the charts she had and she had a couple of charts that, that I really liked. And I said, well, are you ever planning on doing these? And she said, well, ma maybe, probably not. And I said, well, I really like to do them. Can you teach me how to do that, how to do this? And she said, well, these are, these are really big charts and big and complicated. You probably ought to start on something small. So we went to the store together and um, I chose a couple of, of booklets of things that I thought I'd like to stitch. And we got some... Uh, Ida cloth and some floss and she taught me how to stitch and I thought she thought I think that she thought that I'd only be doing it for like about a month or so and then I'd lose lose uh, interest in it but that's not what happened uh, that was over 20 years ago and I've been cross stitching on and on ever since then I don't have a lot to show for 20 years worth of cross stitching. Um, there were times when I kind of lost interest a little bit and also being a, a father of four young kids with uh, family and work and church responsibilities, I haven't had a lot of time to stitch. But as my kids have, have grown older and are starting to, to leave, um, I find that I have more time to stitch now. So why do I like to cross stitch? Um, I'm an engineer by profession and I have found that cross stitching is kind of a, an artistic outlet for me. Um, I'm not very, not very artistic by myself. I, I, I can't really draw. I can draw schematics, but nobody wants to see circuit schematics. I can, um, but I, I have a hard time picking colors and putting colors together. I have a, and like I say, I can't draw. So this is, this is kind of an outlet for me. I can piggyback on some other designer 
and and make something that that's more artistic. I also find that it really calms me down. There are times a, as an engineer basically that means that my job is to solve problems. And sometimes problems are harder to solve than you think and there are times when I come home from work all wound up because of everything that I've been dealing with uh, during the day and I find that one of the best ways to, to calm me down is, is to, to do cross stitch. It's kind of, I, I guess you could say it's become my, my drug of choice. Uh, so what do I like to cross stitch? I like I like to cross stitch uh, landscapes, uh, architecture. Um, I also really like samplers. I I've got a couple of samplers that I'm working on right now, and I like, uh, you know, some stuff more along the uh, more masculine side of things. Um, I'm not really I don't really enjoy doing I, I'm not really attracted by mermaids or 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 things like that or fairies they don't really interest me that much but I really like houses I really like architecture I really like landscapes and you'll kind of see that with with some of the projects I'm working on so uh, how do I cross stitch there was a time uh, when I was just doing one project at a time I've kind of gone back and forth between having multiple projects on the go and having one and about a year ago I was only doing one project at a time the reason why is I thought well if I have multiple projects then I'm stitching forever and I'm never finishing any, or anything because the the projects that I work on tend to be on the large side and I thought and so in order to want to finish something I felt like I had to just concentrate on one project but I've kind of changed my philosophy I mean I'm not in I'm not in a big hurry to finish anything I only have a deadline for one of the pieces that I'm working on and so I've decided to I've decided to start working with the rotation because uh, that way uh, when I work with one project I get kind of bored of that project and it kind of becomes a pain uh, but a rotation gives me variety and and uh, and it makes it so that when I'm starting to get bored with what I'm working on it changes and I, I get to work on something completely different also because I'm doing big projects um, if I limited myself to like to four project for four items in a rotation I think that I would have the same problem that I would have as working with one project all the time that I'd eventually get really really bored with all four project all with with what I was working on so in order to kind of add a little bit of variety to my rotation what I've decided to do is when I get through my rotation I I do a new start and add that into my rotation that's really kind of nice because I still have the discipline of of doing a rotation but I have the idea of I'm going to start something new when I get to the end of my rotation. And that helps me, gets me through the rotation and I get this little bit of anticipation of, well, what am I going to start next? And, and it's been kind of fun to, to be able to do that. Uh, I'm hoping that I'll have pieces that I finish that fall off the rotation before, before my rotation gets huge. Uh, right now, I'm stitching about six or seven pieces. And I... I'm hoping that I don't get up to 50 pieces because then that would that would mean that I was um, only working on on a piece once a year and that seems kind of kind of excessive so we'll see what happens um, I, I've got some pieces that are getting closer to being finished and some that aren't so so we'll see what happens so uh, that's kind of a little bit about me and about my cross-stitch philosophy um, as we talk through my whips, you'll probably find out some more stuff about me. So let's get started with what I'm working on. Uh, the first thing I'm working on is uh, a piece by Stony Creek. Um, this is, I actually, there's a big story behind this piece. I bought this as a kit years ago. 
uh, with the intention of making it for my parents for, for a Christmas present or something like that. And the kit came with uh, Aida cloth. And I didn't want to stitch it on Aida. I wanted it to look really nice and fancy. So I went to the craft store and bought some cheap linen. It, it said it was linen. And I started it on that. And I came to really, really hate and despise that, that material. It was uh, by MCG Textiles. And I didn't like the feel of it. It felt kind of rubbery. Um, it wasn't smooth. It was kind of fuzzy. And the squares weren't even. Uh, and I, I got so I just really hated working with it. But I, I, I kind of forced myself to do it, and I almost, I almost finished all the cross-stitching on it. And it just got so bad, and I, I thought, I don't even like the way this is looking. And so I thought, I'm going to start this over again. And I found this same design in a booklet that was charted with DMC instead of trying to match uh, colors with the colors that came with the kit. And so I, I bought the booklet and I started over. So what this is, is this is called Our Family Tree and this is what it will look like when it's finished. So there's an oak tree up here um, and then there's, there's a poem on either side of the oak tree. And then there's a pedigree chart uh, for the husband and the wife and there's a place for you to put the, the names of the children. Um, and then down here on the border, there's oak leaves and acorns. There's butterflies. Um, there's a lot of blending filament in this, in this piece, a lot of metallic, so it's really, really sparkly. Um, and uh, there's also ribbon embroidery. So there's, there's roses and, and petals that are done with silk ribbon. So that's what it's gonna look like. And I have, this is, this is where I am with it. I have actually finished all the cross stitching and almost all of the back stitching on this. So this is what it looks like. If I can get it back further and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a close up view in a minute. So I've done all, the only thing I've left to do is to, to, to stitch the poem and then I have to I have to personalize it. I have to stitch in the all the all the names in the pedigree chart, which I know what the names are, but I'm gonna have to chart every name out to, to center it on the design and all that kind of stuff. So that's gonna be uh, kind of a it's gonna be not a challenge, but it's gonna take some time to do. Um, I really like how this looks, so I'll give you a little bit of a closer look. That tree is really cool. I like the variegated floss with the R family. And then you might be able to see the, the pedigree chart lines are all done, ready to go. And then there's the, there's the border. Those, the butterflies are, are stitched with blending filament and they're, and they're outlined with uh, gold petite treasure braid. And so they're really sparkly. And I'll, I, I also wanted to read the poem because I, I really like the, the poem that goes with this. Uh, you can't read it, so I'll read it for you. It says, Our family bond with hearts entwined stands strong as the oak tree through all time. By grace of God, when faith endures, our circle of love will be complete when in heaven we all shall meet. So my wife, after it took me, I, I'd spent years working on that other piece and and my wife could kind of give me a hard time about, you're never going to finish that. And finally she said, maybe you ought to have a goal to get it done for, for your parents' 50th wedding anniversary. And so that's my plan, is I'm going to give it to them for their 50th wedding anniversary. That is next year. So I've got a year to finish it. I'm glad where I'm happy with where I am with this. I'm, I'm sure that I'm going to be able to finish it by then. And I think it'll be a wonderful, a wonderful 50th wedding anniversary gift for them. So that's the first piece in my rotation. The next piece in my rotation is a design from Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, this is the only Heaven and Earth design that I'm doing. 
and it's based on artwork by Randall Spangler and it's called Autumn Magic and this is what it looks like it's basically a house that's in an autumn setting and I really like this I really like the way this house looks um, it's I'd love to live in this house <laughs> but um, he has he has houses for uh, every every season of the year and at one time I thought that I'd stitch all four but they're so big I don't think I don't know if I'll ever be able to, to stitch all four houses so this is this is where I am with this um, this is I am stitching on 25 count Lugana uh, one over one and I've been working on this for about a year and all I have to show for it is just this this lower corner. Um, I haven't been stitching completely, uh, constantly for a year because I have um, I I I've, I've set it down for long periods of time. But so basically, all I've got done is the beginnings of the of the cobblestone path that goes to the house, and then the the gar the gate into the into the lawn is also starting to show up. And I, I, I'm really quite ambivalent about this piece, uh, partly because I, I do not like stitching one over one. I find it very uh, kind of difficult. Uh, I, I have had a hard time. I used to uh, start my floss by running it through the back of the stitches and end it that way. But with one over one, I find that really hard to do because it's so tight on the back that I have a hard time running a needle back through there. So um, Pam Reed did a video on using waist knots to, and I've started using waist knots and that's, that's been a, a great, uh, that's really helped. Uh, another thing you'll notice about this is you'll notice that I park uh, I learned how to park a couple of years ago, and when I learned how to park, that made my stitching go a lot faster. And so I park whenever I can because it helps me to stitch faster. I love parking. And I used to kind of work in columns, um, but since in the last, oh, since the beginning of the year, I've decided to work diagonally. I like working diagonally because I think it gets me. Uh, into the action of what's going on a little bit faster. It also gives me a lot more variety because I'm working uh, across the diagonal of the chart and there's a lot of variety diagonally versus going up and down. I also think it makes my stitches neater and I could go into that. I'm not going to go into why that is right now but I think it makes my stitches look a lot neater too. So uh, when I started this, I was working in columns, and now I'm, I'm working diagonally. Um, and my goal is, so I'm, like I said, I'm pretty ambivalent about this piece. There was one time when I thought it looked really pixelated, and I started to think, well, I'd almost rather stitch pieces that are uh, deliberately designed by a designer as opposed to uh, computer generated designs because I, I, I didn't really like the way it was looking pixelated. I think more that now that I've got more done, it doesn't look quite so pixelated. Um, but so every time I pull this out, there's this back and forth. It's so big. Uh, one of the things I do is I keep track of, um, I keep track of how much I stitch every night. And based on that, and I enter that into a spreadsheet, this is the engineer in me. And with that information, I can kind of predict uh, about when I'm going to finish a piece. And my spreadsheet says that it's going to take me, at the pace I'm running, working on this right now, it's going to take me a, a decade or two to finish. And the thought of, of that and and whether or not I, so part of me says, do I really want to spend that much time working on this when there's so many other things that I want to stitch? Um, so so there, there's that, the size of the piece. Uh, I don't particularly enjoy working one over one that much. Um, 
but I really like how it's turning out and um, we'll see what happens. My goal is to eventually get to, to where the house is. I want to see how the house shows up and maybe maybe when I get there I'll fall in love with it a little bit more and, and feel like I, I want to stitch on it more and I'll figure out how to, how to stitch on it more to get it done sooner. Uh, the other possibility is I may say I, this is not worth it and I may just stop it. I, I don't know which way that's going to go but we'll see what happens. Uh, the next piece I'm working on, this is, the, this is the piece that I just barely finished in my rotation. And it's a design by uh, Graphs by Barbara and Cheryl. It's called Verandas of South Battery. And it's basically a picture of five houses in a, along a street. And I recently did a little bit of research and found out that this is an actual uh, place. Um, this is a, a street in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And the, the address of this house is 86 South Battery. You can put that address into Google Maps and pull up Street View and you can see these houses. And that is really kind of fun to do, to, see, to say, oh, I've stitched that. And that's, that's, you know, you see details in the houses that you hadn't noticed before because you've actually stitched it. Uh, I've also found out these must be pretty famous houses because there are two or three of them that have their own Wikipedia entries. And this house here, its Wikipedia entry says that it was sold recent, maybe in the last two or three years. I don't remember exactly, but that it was sold for over seven million dollars and that it's the most expensive house in Charleston. So, so this must be a really desirable place to live. And anyway, they, I really like them. So I've been, this, there are several pieces that I have that I started years ago and I'm trying to get them finished. And this is one of those pieces I started this years ago. And it's only been in the last six months or so that I've been really, really working on it. Um, and this is where I am. So the, the last time, hold on. The last time that I stitched this, I finished the third house and got pretty well into the, to the fourth house. And um, this is stitched on 32 count platinum, even weave. I don't remember if it's Lugana or Jobalon, but I'm, I, just looking at it, I'm pretty sure it's not linen. I didn't used to keep track of, of what I was stitching on, so. But I know it's 32 count. And this is where it is. I really like how this is turning out. It's going to look even better. I saved my back stitching for the end. So it's going to look even better when I, when I do the back stitching because there's going to be wrought iron, uh, black wrought iron uh, fences across the front of the houses. Um, the veranda railings are stitched with uh, white pearl cotton. So there'll be veranda railings that look really cool. And it's, it's just going to look good. I'm excited to get over on this half of the, of the design because uh, these houses, I mean, I've stitched two, two white houses now. I'm getting tired of, of white. So I'm excited to, to stitch with a, a couple of other different colors. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Uh, this is the piece that I'm currently working on. And I saw a floss tuber that was working on this. I don't remember who it was. But when I saw it, I... I I really wanted to do it. So this is a design, it's uh, called Winter Sampler. This is what it looks like. It's a design by Sandy Orton. She's part of Cooler Design Studio. And I really like this, this picture. I especially like this corner down here with the gingerbread man. And was seeing the gingerbread man and this ribbon and this picture of Santa Claus that made me really want to stitch it. I also really like this skating scene up here. And you, and, um, so I've been, this is about my third or fourth time that this has come through my rotation. And this is, this is where I am. I, I stitched on it last night. So I'm working diagonally on this one too. And so I've done this lower corner. You can see I've done the snow globe and the Christmas candy. 
Um, I'm starting to see the, the banner that counts down from 10 down to 1. This little blue Chris, a winter scene right here, I think that looks really awesome and it's going to look even better when it's back stitched. Uh, there's this picture of a skier at Mont Blanc um, that, that's there and, and now I finished the ribbon. I love that ribbon. It just amazes me how just a little, a few colors can add that much detail and make it look so three-dimensional. And I'm starting to see the, the, the picture of Santa is starting to show up. So I really love this. This is really fun. It's going really fast because there are a lot of areas that aren't stitched, but those areas that aren't stitched are covered with backstitch. Like this book is going to have a poem in it, and there's just tons of backstitch in this. So I'm afraid I'm going to be backstitching for months to, to finish that, uh, which is fine. I, I've thought about backstitching as I go, but I never know where to start and where to stop. So, so I'll just save it for the end. I, I kind of like backstitching at the end anyway because it just kind of makes everything pop. It looks really good. So um, a couple of years ago, I, I finished stitching Stroke of Midnight by Teresa Winsler. And that, if you aren't familiar with that, that's a, that's a picture of Cinderella uh, running from the, fr from the ball. She's running down some steps and the prince is in the background uh, trying, to, trying to bring her back. And I have two daughters that when they saw that piece, they, they both fell in love with it. And they both said to me, come on, dad, you've got to give that to me. I'm your favorite daughter. And I, I do not want them fighting over that piece when I die. So I decided that I need to stitch uh, some things that they really like so that they, they're not fighting over everything. They can kind of split them up between them or burn them if they want. I don't care. But so right now I'm, I'm, I've started a Mirabilia piece uh, kind of intended to be for one of them. And what I've started is, is red. Um, I, there aren't a lot of Mirabilia pieces that really, really talk to me, but this one did. I really like her, and everybody's seen, I think this is a pretty popular piece, so I know a lot of people have seen it. Um, and this is, this is where I am with red. Um, so I've, I've actually done quite a bit. I've... Uh, this stitch is actually pretty quickly because there's not a lot of confetti. It's just uh, uh, blocks of color. So yeah, I, I don't get slowed down a lot. And I finished most of the cloak. I know there's more up here, uh, but I'm getting close to her hand that comes across like this. I really like the dre how the dress is coming out. And I'm going to be seeing more of the dress. Um, this will be the first piece that has is heavily beaded that I've done. I've done beads a little bit before. So you see all of this, all of these empty spaces, that's where beads are going to go. It's going to, there are going to be a lot of beads. And um, I'm stitching this on 32 count French lace linen. It's the fabric that was called for in the design. And I've heard people talk about how uh, all of the beads sometimes don't fit with 32 count linen, uh, so I'm a little bit nervous about that, I mean, about what's going to happen when I start beading, but I've got a while to go before I get to that point. But I, I, I really like how this is turning out. It looks really, really good to me, and I'm kind of getting tired of stitching red, so I'm excited to see these other colors show up. So I mentioned uh, Teresa Wensler. She's probably my favorite designer. I think I have more patterns of her designs than, than anybody else in my, in my stash. And, so I, and they're all patterns that I want to stitch. So I've decided that I want to have a Teresa Wensler on the go all the time. And the piece that I'm working on right now is called English Garden Sampler. Um, it's a sampler. It has an English garden, 
There's a couple of peacocks uh, in here. Um, there are a lot, there's just a little bit of everything in this. Uh, the, the alphabet is stitched over one, so is the gate. Um, there's blending filament, beads. Um, there's a cut work border all along here too, which is something I've never done. So we'll see how that goes when I, when I get to that. Uh, I really like this piece. And this is another piece that I started a long time ago. And I, <laughs> I use the word start very loosely. I stitched one letter and put it down. And I haven't touched it again until, until just a uh, couple of months ago. And so back then, I used to start in the middle. And now I like to start on the corner, on, the, on one of the corners. So what I've done is I, I stitched over to the border and I'm working on the border. And I'm, my goal is to finish the entire border and then I'll start filling in the middle. I don't know if I'll work from the top down or from the bottom up. I'll decide that when I, when I get to that point. Um, but it's really, I really like how this is coming out. It stitches really good. The, the border is real. I've got the border about memorized, so it's going pretty fast. I've got to go back in here and put in a bunch of eyelets and fan stitches all along the border before it's really finished. Oh, and there's a lot of back stitch as well. So, but it's, it's going pretty fast. Uh, another thing about this piece that I want to say is, um, I decided I wanted to see, try using Sullivan's floss instead of DMC. So this is stitched with Sullivan's. And I really like how Sullivan stitches. It doesn't seem to tangle as much for me as DMC. I, I have problems with it tangling every once in a while. And Sullivan's doesn't seem to do that to me. But when you compare Sullivan's colors with DMC colors, it looks like Sullivan's has a little bit of a gray tint to them as compared to DMC. So um, they're a little bit more muted, I guess. So this piece isn't going to be as bright colors as it would have been if I had stitched DMC. That doesn't really bother me. I mean, I, but for, for this piece, but that's just, just my observation with Sullivan's floss. So the last time I came down through my rotation, I had to decide, I had a hard time deciding what I wanted to stitch next. And part of me wanted to start something small uh, so that I have a, a piece that I could possibly finish this year because it looks like I'm going to go all this year and not, not finish anything. Uh, and so that was my first thought. So I, I pulled out a, a design that I got from one of my mom's magazines. This is uh, from For the Love of Cross Stitch, uh, November 1994. And it's a series of, there's a series of four um, duck decoys. Um, there's two more, there, there's two more in the, the following issue that I also have. And when I saw these years ago, I thought, oh, these would be kind of fun to, to stitch, and I'll hang them up in my office if I ever have an office. So I, I still don't have an office, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to start these. So this is, I'm working on this one right now. This is the Mallard. And that's the one that I decided to start. So I... I pulled this out and I started it and I only stitched on it one day so I didn't get a whole lot done but you can kind of see the beginning of the shelf and there's like shadow under the shelf and the beginning of the the cloth that the duck is sitting on and I, I stitched on this for one day and all the next day I regretted starting this because I had another piece that I really wanted to start and all that next day, I thought, oh, why didn't I start that other piece? So I took that as a sign, and I've laid this aside. It's going to get put in my rotation again uh, when I get to it. Uh, but I really wanted to do this other piece. So I officially put this other piece in my rotation instead. And this is a sampler. Um, it's done by uh, Clo Remy Designs, which is a designer in Belgium. It's called Corazon Sampler. And it's a French type alphabet sampler with a, a heart motif in the middle. 
And when I saw this on, on her website, I, I just fell in love with it and I, I just had to do it. So, so I started this also. And this is stitched on 36 count antique white and burl linen. It's the first time I've stitched on 36 count. I really like it because the squares are really small, but they, it, I think the, I think I like the the size of it. I'm stitching this, so I've stitched up to the letter E, and I've started the border. I've never stitched anything like this before, and it's kind of fun. It's kind of nice to be stitching with just one color. This is DMC 815, and I really like the the that color for this. I think it's really really cool. It's the color that she she used in the design as well. So, and you'll notice that. I love the the letters with the the flowers going across them. When I I saw the dog in the design, I thought that's kind of strange. I thought that was kind of strange, but once I got him stitched, I really like him. I think he's I think he's cute, and I think he adds a little bit of whimsy to the design. And there's there's little things like that all the way through it. So it'll be fun to see what else pops up that I really like. So I'm really ha I really had fun doing this, and I'm excited to see how how much further I get with it. So that's the, that's the end of my rotation. Uh, that's about all I have. I want to thank you for um, spending time with me and uh, watching, this, watching this video. Uh, feel free to like and, and subscribe and or comment uh, on, on what I'm doing. I'd love to, love to hear your comments. If you want to, you can also follow me on Instagram. Uh, once again, my name is on Instagram is Blitzstitch. And I try to post daily pictures of my updates. So you can kind of see what I'm doing on a daily basis. It's not strictly daily because there are, there are, there are days when I don't have time to stitch. But in general, it's daily updates. So if you want to see how these things progress in real time, follow me on Instagram. Um, and we'll, uh, I want, once again, thanks for, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, in spite of my nervous habits and tics and hope that, hope that you enjoyed it. Feel free to like and subscribe and thanks. And we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.